That's a horrible, horrible process. How are you feeling? Terrible. I feel terrible. Thank you for asking. What is going on here, man? Aha! Oh! Gosh. This didn't really have to be that difficult. I, what is going on? Literally, what is going on right now? Well, this was supposed to be a simple, straightforward process. I don't know what I did, and I'm having a day. What's going on everybody? Today we are installing Bora wheel spacers on a Kubota BX23S. Have a lot of Kubota fans out there. I wanted to get something different into the shop, so I'm gonna have this tractor for a little while, do some different videos with it, maybe show you how you can accessorize the different attachments available. The first thing we're gonna do, install these wheel spacers. We are proud to be sponsored by Bora wheel spacers, and today we're gonna be installing fronts and rear spacers on this Kubota tractor. This is a product that's gonna be made in the USA. You can get aluminum or steel, varying widths for the fronts, for the rears, for for your trucks, for your tractors, for UTVs. Hey, and if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button down below to see more. And if you want something for your tractor, maybe an attachment for the front or the back, visit goodworkstractors.com. So a common question you guys ask is what size spacers can I put on if I have a mower deck? And this is a good example uh, right here. What I did is I measured the space between the outside of the tire and then the nearest interference point. So you gotta imagine the tire is just gonna slide out straight out towards me. And so if I'm pushing it out, let's see how far we can get without making a contact or interference with the gauge wheel, the gauge arm, whatever might be the interference point in your situation. You do wanna measure on both sides because this measurement could be different depending on your mower deck and the brand of tractor you have. So you wanna put the same size spacer on both sides of the machine. So measure both sides and then you're gonna to wanna to take the smallest measurement. And what I did is round down a half inch to go to the next smallest size. There's tight clearances all around uh, the tractor and the mower deck and the tires. You can see there's maybe a half inch or less between the mower deck and the tire barely enough to slide my fingers between uh, the section on the frame and the tire on the Kubota tractor. So it's very tight tolerances all around. There's not a lot of movement when this is all hooked up and, and you're using it. So it's okay not to have a lot of room if you want to try to maximize your wheel spacer size. All right, so we're going to try to be uh, lazy today and do this by only taking the mower deck off. We can certainly do the fronts without removing it. Uh, we could probably do the rears without removing it as well but uh, it's gonna make it easier for us. So let's get that rotated. Now these decks are not drive over and auto connect. They do have an option, but it's not very popular. It's kind of, um, I don't know, rudimentary, I guess. But you can see, this is a good case of deck damage. And this is why you wanna take your mower decks off when you're not using them, because there's not a lot of clearance. This is raised up as high as it can go right now. And you have what? Um, I don't know, four and a half inches or so of clearance underneath the deck. And so if this catches a stump or maybe you're on uneven ground and catches a hole and just gets bent back, you can see what happens to the deck. Now it's uh, usable still, and you could bend this back out of course as well, but it's still something that is uh, preventable. And that's why I really like those John Deere Auto Connect decks and a drive over deck in general that makes it easier to take on and off. I gotta take that part off. Here we go. All right guys, so we just got the mower deck off. I know I'm out of shape, but I'm sweating pretty good. It's not the worst thing in the world. However, it's night and day compared to an auto connect drive over deck. So that's another reason if you take your decks on and off a lot, which I can tell this one wasn't just because of that potential damage and everything was just kind of, you can tell it was on there for a while. Uh, the PTO splines, that was really on there pretty good too, but it's good just to take these mower decks off even once in a while if you're gonna mow with it all the time, just so you can do the regular maintenance, make sure everything is functioning like you want it to. Let's get to those wheel spacers. So I misspoke. We put VersaTurf tires on here. I wanted to show you guys that these tires will fit the BX tractors as well. 
Same size as the, uh, the John Deere 1025R, you have the 18 uh, by 8.5s and then the 261212s on the rear. So you can get these tires for your tractor if you want to. Um, when we had them installed, you can see there's a lug missing right here. So this is that uh, bolt right here and it was severely cross threaded in there. There was no way this was going back in. We got to get another one, but I'm not sure if the threads are going to be completely wonky inside here. I don't know if we're going to need to re-thread that, re-tap it. Best way to do that, I'm going to have to look online or if you guys have an idea, leave a comment down below. But this tractor is not what I would call a cherry. You know, it's been used. It's got about 370 hours on it. Got some dings in the bucket areas. Uh, obviously this was stripped out. It's had some leaks in the hydraulic system right for this loader, which, you know, at first I thought it was a coincidence, the first one I had, but I've had three or four of these machines and um, I've had at least three with leaks in the hydraulic loader system, both on this valve and then down below spilling onto the mower deck too. Uh, it's got some wear points on the steps getting on and off of the machine on both sides, some dings and the fenders all around. This is one of the reasons I don't get that many Kubotas is uh, cosmetically they don't hold up very well. So it's very challenging to find them. They're easy to damage. The mower deck has a damage on it too. Uh, there's some other models, some of their bigger models hold up better as well. But these BXs for some reason, they just seem to have a lot of damage like this. And that's one of the frustrating things about getting them in when you don't notice it in pictures. snap off okay so I am uh, having some trouble with that last bolt it really feels like I'm gonna shear it off if I keep going I'm trying to make the right decision so that uh, that does not happen uh, impact is not doing anything I've got the breaker bar on there but I can just feel it gonna snap at some point soon not sure what's gonna happen Spinning that around. How does that even possible? Mm. Oh, what do we get? Snap, crackle, pop. This didn't really have to be that difficult. This was supposed to be a simple, easy process, but we are off to a bad start. That's not good. Get this one installed.
And that, my friends, is how you install a Bora wheel spacer. So you got to keep this going with it at the same time, or? Okay, so we are struggling today. Uh, broke the torque wrench somehow. Um, yeah, it's, it just freely spins and you can't tighten it down. I don't know what I did. And I'm having a day, but we're gonna keep on persevering and see if we can get three out of four wheel spacers installed. snug after we drop it down so we get a new torque wrench. Well, folks, that is how you install three wheel spacers on a tractor. So if you have a tri-wheel, you're in business. If you have stripped out threads and a sheared off bolt in your hub, you're not in business yet. But you're still more stable than you would be, although this is not the recommended installation. So today just wasn't our day, and I don't know if the wheel hub damage with the stripped out threads and the sheared off bolt and everything is from the original owner doing something incorrectly, or if it's just cheap steel or cheap materials, I don't have any idea, but we had some threading or cross-threading issues on the rear hub, on the stems that are sticking out too. So I'm gonna end up taking this into uh, Wolf Kubota uh, over in Matawan and have them take a look at it, see if they can get us fixed up. Hopefully they can get it re-threaded uh, or maybe we need some new parts, I don't know.
On the plus side, we've got the rear spacers installed completely. This gives you a good look at how it looks with the mower deck. These are two inch spacers on here and you still have roughly an inch, you know, maybe a little bit less on this side than you do on this side, but overall plenty of space. So you have two inch spacers on a 60 inch deck on a Kubota VX. If you guys have other subcompacts or other tractor models, you 1025, 1023E owners, leave a comment down below with what size spacers you have if you're running a mower deck with it that'd be helpful same thing for larger machines too so when you don't have cross thread issues on any of your axles i mean it takes mere minutes these rear ones are heavy <laughs> even though they're small they're heavy so uh, the two of us working together to get them back on was a lot easier than trying to manhandle that by yourself the fronts were a piece of cake so a lot of you will wonder about doing the fronts like we talked about and so you could see maybe that front axle pivoting at certain points in the video but you know as you go over hills it's still going to pivot however even from a tracking standpoint with the rears and the fronts kind of following along in the same path putting that same amount of spacer or width on the fronts compared to the back is going to help even out that that footprint as you're driving along another point to note about the front spacers is that if you do have a drive over mower deck if you don't have a mower deck nothing to worry about but if you have a drive over mower deck then you're going to want to take into account that additional width on the front tires because when you're driving over you want to make sure there's going to be no restrictions or obstructions with that additional That's width as you drive over your mower that's a horrible, horrible process. How are you feeling? Terrible. I feel terrible. Thank you for asking. I mean, I can understand why people don't want to take those decks off. Last but not least, you do want to finish these off by using a torque wrench to adjust to the proper setting based on the tractor manufacturer. Reference your manual if you can't find it online. Uh, the fronts are around 120 and the rears are around 90 or so. It has a range on there for this Kubota BX. We weren't able to do that today because we ended up breaking our torque wrench. That's just the way the day was going. So if you can avoid pitfalls like uh, cross-threaded bolts in the front and sheared off bolts, cross-threaded stems on the back and a broken torque wrench, things go pretty smooth. Bora performed flawlessly. So if you're looking for a set of wheel spacers for your tractor, this is a good look at how they can get installed on a Kubota, not just a BX, but any SAS Kubota tractor. And for any tractor that's out there, you order them right from Bora's website. There's gonna be a link down below. Pick out all the options, the sizes, the front, the rear, whatever you need. Normally they do have a lead time. They're a made to order item because they're a, a custom solution. So just expect that and plan ahead. Alrighty guys, well, if you would, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button below if you want to see more tractor videos and head on over to Goodworks Tractors if you're looking for something for your machine. Thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.